Hello, everyone. This is the Mixed Mutts Podcast, Episode 3. the hell are you doing, Shivani? What was that? Why did you have... Was that spinach or kale? Why did you have that? Sometimes you just don't have enough time in the day to eat, like, a proper vegetable. So. Really? Your day is that busy? Herbivore. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm getting my PhD. I'm busy all the time. So, so, wait. I don't understand. I don't under like. That's how you eat vegetables. So, well, sometimes you just don't have time to cook them, so you just shovel, you funnel them into your house. Like I, sometimes I put like spinach into like a plastic bag and. I love these neuroscientists. These very the smart people. They always go. I, you know, sometimes there's just not enough time in the day to to cook a vegetable, so I have to fucking shove them James, in my mouth. It's about being efficient. Being efficient. Okay, you got to be efficient with your day. Sometimes you don't have time to fire up the oven and cook a vegetable for 30 minutes. Yeah, people are putting spinach in You need to find ovens. your vitamin A and C and D and E and F. I'm going to be completely honest with you and don't take this the wrong way. I think you literally just do that to be eat different. That's like you just trying to be different. Eating spinach out of a fucking plastic container it's to be like it's a efficient. bag of chips. Efficiency. Whatever, dude. There's nothing cool about shoveling leaves into your mouth. Then why do you do it? Because I need my vegetables, and I don't know how to get them any other way sometimes. There's just not enough time. All right. Let's let's move on from this fucking freak over here. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. This is the Mixed Months Podcast, episode three. Um, I'm your host, James Camacho, with my co-host, the herbivore, the herb... As in loser vor I'm no, I, I completely butchered it. Shivani Bigler, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and we're bringing this podcast to you because there's really only eight. <laughs> there's only eight hundred and fifty thousand live podcasts going on in the world, oh. and so we—it's just too little. It's just too little mouse. So we have to bring you another one. Right, right, right. We, there's uh, the pool, the barrier to entry. There's, there's barrier to entry. So yeah. we uh, were able to gain access to the podcast. There's not a lot. So, yeah, we. Uh... <laughs> another two fools throwing some words at you. I love how you just were like eight. <laughs> You're <only> like eight. <laughs> I was like, so they're like. All right. I, uh, I don't know what she's talking about. Like, just like with the spinach, I'm a little confused. And I'm going to just keep going. This is so funny. It's like, as we're doing this podcast, I feel like I'm learning stuff about you that I didn't know from being in a relationship with you for almost three years. Just immediately. Eight? And this herbivore shit, this spinach shit. I'm just like, I don't even know this person. Well, it's like, in this podcast, you actually have to sit down, right, and have a conversation with me. Oh Whereas, God, like, right. all other times, you're on your phone, and you're like, what? What? <laughs> I forgot what you said. I, I just got back from the road the other day, and Shivani calls me. She She's like, we, you know, we're going to have dinner. She goes, I'm like, what do you want to watch? And she goes, why don't we just, like, have a conversation? And I immediately, I don't know, maybe the quickest in the world, I was like, no, we're no, let's gonna, we're going to watch something. <laughs> <laughs> well, why can't we just sit down and have a nice conversation? It was pretty, it did, uh, as the words left my mouth, no, like, I'd rather not. It was pretty disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, well, so this is why you're learning stuff about me is because you're forced to hear what I have to say. Yeah. And then you're forced to make conversation based off of that. That's so. why this podcast is good for you because you get to. Because I get to educate speak. Me about, you get to Because I get to, to yab. That's the anyway. sad thing about this world. It's like a lot. You can't have a conversation anymore. You got to have a unless there's a, po there's a podcast. There needs to be a. A reason behind having a conversation. There needs to be a reason to get up, leave your house, and talk to somebody. Right. It can't just be, oh, let's have a conversation. Let's go out to dinner. It's got to be like, well, we record it and try to monetize it. Yeah. Anyway, so um, thanks for listening, guys. We really, really hope you appreciate the, and like the first couple episodes. We really appreciate you listening. Yeah. Now, as I was editing the first couple episodes, I did notice some um, inconsistencies with our uh, theorems. I'm trying to sound like a scientist here. Um, I just noticed like, um, so for example, on the first episode, we were making, uh, fun of, uh, how some white weddings are. 
Yeah. And we were we were talking about how that song Shout, every time you hear it, you know, all the, Let's you know. Let's play it for them. Let's play it for them. Hey, right. hey, so, hey. All, right, all the white people go crazy. And we, on the pot, first episode, we just, like, blatantly were like, that's that white song, that white song this, white song that. What? 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 Like, we're fucking a bunch of pigeons. We just say what's, all, like, coming out of our asses. Right. And then I researched it, and the song Shout is actually by the Isley Brothers, the who Isley are, Brothers. Uh, it's a black group. Yeah. So it's not a white song. It's but, not a white song. Right. No. But white people really enjoyed it. But we kind of, you know, because we're ignorant and we didn't we didn't know. And we just hear the song all the time, like in Wedding Crashers. And in Wedding Crashers, did they go? Did they crash any black weddings in Wedding Crashers? Remember that scene where they're crashing all the weddings and he's banging all the girls? I Owen don't Wilson remember is? that movie, honestly. I don't have any like shred of memory of there, that There's movie. a scene where they're like doing that quick jump cut of all the weddings they crash, and they're like sleeping with all these women. Oh, and it's and like they have white wedding, playing? white wedding. There's like one Jewish wedding. I think there was an Asian wedding, maybe like an Indian wedding. And no black wedding. And it, but it? Sh- Are you sure? I'm pretty sure there wasn't like a black wedding right, that they well, went we'll to. We'll have to review that as well. Right. Or, yeah. <laughs> but from my, my, my pea brain memory, that's what I remember. There was no black wedding. And they were, they were doing that shout song. So we just thought it was a white song. But we're wrong. We're wrong. And yeah. we kind of like talked about it. Like obviously, you know, like it's a, like it's a quote unquote black song. Because like you yeah. would say like. A Cardi B song's a black song, right? I like I don't I wouldn't describe it that way. I know, but it's weird. <laughs> it's weird because it's I feel like it's a banger. It's like, a banger. It's a great talk song. Talk about you know. But it like I don't know if you you talk about like a country song like a Kid Rock song or whatever. That's a white song, right? I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know your culture very well, Shiv. Um, no, but we're wrong. But like we kind of talked about it. It's like how come. I don't know. In my, How come we thought it was a white, a white song? song? And I think it's because, like, I think we kind of maybe, and look, I'm just going to speak for we, myself. Yeah, go ahead. Sometimes when I hear, like, the classic oldies, like that classic 60s rock channel with, like, the, you know, the songs that your parents, when they hear, they perk up, you know, and then, like, I think is white, like, kind of, like, classified with, like, Old and corny. Corny. Yeah. Is that is that a thing? Or well, I because <laughs> that shout song, black song, but like by made by black people, but it's like I think of it as like an old corny song, and then I don't know what you're talking about, James. Uh, I don't think it's corny at all. I think it's a fantastic song. I I I wouldn't say a single negative thing about that song. So no. So whoa 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 whoa. <laughs> Whoa, 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 that's the best song that was ever made. Whoa. I Hey, hey! Contradicting Karen over here. Because the first the first the first episode, you were like, I hate that song. Everyone was dancing to it. I I I wanted to leave. I wanted to defriend that person. I don't remember. I wanted to throw wine, red wine on her wedding dress. You know what? And now you know it's a black song. You are all about it. I think you're imagining things, James. All right? I think you're I I defended that song. I loved that song. I took that song into my heart like it's my own. I never associated it with a white wedding. And you just like, white. yeah, I you can't do it. I can't do it. Sat down. You know what the song was that they were playing? It was that jump. No, no, no. The shout. Jump. Shout. Shout. It's shout, not jump. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, I'm getting triggered, James. I'm getting triggered. Yeah. I, I just had to walk off. I was like, I, I need air. Yeah. I need. Yeah. I need. You're very something. bothered by. It. You're uncomfortable it's about too, the whiteness. The, the music was too blinding. If you catch my drift. I, I will. I will. Shiv, never did any you of. You can't th- hide. That song your, is the greatest song of all time. You can't hide your Karen. It's so like. <gasps> <laughs> you just like. You just like like when you're trying to be, like what are, what are Karens like? Not malicious. What's the right word for a Karen? Like. Dude, I don't know. Everyone a has Karen. Their different. It just comes Look, out of you. Like it's just true. To, you're it's backtracking. True. Once back- I found out that. This song that I called corny and associated with a white wedding, once I found out that it was created by a black group, I got uncomfortable calling it corny. I got like, I I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I dissed this song. I dissed this track. Can I say this? I, I, I didn't feel uncomfortable like calling it like corny or classic or an oldie. 
because that's what the song is. It's an old song. It's an old song that you play, like every wedding. It's on the, the DJ list. Like they request it. Like every like celebratory, every wedding they play that. It's yeah. just become that. And honestly, like I'm gonna speak from um, another perspective. Like if you can, if you if you create anything that's that classical yeah. that gets played everywhere, it's like we are like any Queen song. Is like a classic. Like they play everywhere. Like it's it's universal, timeless. That's such an impressive thing. It's like Kobe level shit or MJ level shit, where it's like universal and global. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah, like they but, could play that song. Like we could hear it for the first time today, and it would hit like the top ten. You know. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's a top ten. But like, in the like universe. you're still allowed to think like, oh, I think that's a little corny. I yeah. think it's a little. It's a little. You know. It's not my like favorite song in the world, but. It's a lot of people's favorite song in the world, and right, and I'm gonna base my opinion on <laughs> right. I, so I don't think of it as um, I don't. I honestly like. I feel I feel very um, ashamed of myself Why? that I just went. I just went ahead and was like, "That's a white song," because because yeah, yeah. I just automatically assumed it's old, corny, uh, um, it's popular or whatever it's yeah like, it's predictable it must be white yeah. like, that's okay, a weird yeah, yeah. thing to kind of like that's i feel like shame. i feel that's like reverse racism in a way you know it's like if i heard like uh i mean god i mean i don't want to i'm gonna get a little edgy here that's but if, like i heard a song and i was like that's a black song like that's like people be like oh jesus christ you know but i hear something kind of like i associate it in a negative way like old this that white like it's that's kind of fucked up on me i'm i wish i was more before i would say any race stuff like that i wish i would have like googled it like yeah this song's kind of old and whack like so on this podcast we like to talk out of our ass yes and we are going to continue talking out of our ass because talking out of our ass is all based on our own stop oh you got a nice ass it's all based on our own experience our no own ass. opinions our own feelings and so we're just going to communicate that because that's what's real to us and we're going to also watch tape and we're going to review yeah. And we're going to make sure that we tie up loose ends if we fault somewhere or we say something and and we, like, want to talk about it more because we figured out, like, our but experience I think Shiv, isn't I, Yes, I agree. But I think it's also – this is know? a lesson for both of us to, like – and I think a lot of people do this in the world. It's, like, when they talk about anything that, like, they're not – like, I mean, we hear with this COVID stuff, it's all, like, people are like, you got to wear your mask. You don't got to wear your mask. This, that, that, like – None of us are in a lab with test tubes and, and Bunsen burners wafting. We don't know. We just go on by what other people say. So sometimes, like, you get in these arguments and you like, you these, 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 like, like, people are just screaming information that they've heard. Like, they don't really, they're yeah. not really totally educated on. Yeah. You know? Okay. Another example of that is um, we talked about that Dove commercial, right? Well, before we move on, I just want to say is that this is a lesson to both of us. To not always speak out of our ass, you know? It's yeah. Like if we're going to make these, like, and people do them all the time, and it's colloquial, and we're just having fun, but, like, you know, before you really... Well, let's talk about sure the Dove commercial. Make sure, just make sure you let's know Let's talk about yeah. the Dove commercial, okay? Like, we're right. moving on. So, so um, in our second episode, there yes. was... Uh, we referred to a Dove commercial that was um, that got panned some, like, for being racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got slammed. And I saw it first on Jesus Amaro. Okay. And I took it. I took it like completely. I just, I love the show. So we're, and you I know, took it like I, I didn't think anything else. I didn't do my own research on that. So either. we're going to play the, the commercial right now. Um, so for anyone that hasn't seen it, basically, um, there's a, I believe it's very short. It's in not like 2017. A, it's, like a, it's an internet right? ad. Right? Was yeah. it 2017? 20 Yes, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's something 2017. Like that. Yeah. It's a it's an internet ad, very quick. It's like 15 seconds. There's a there's a, a black lady. It's a dub commercial black lady and she like takes off her, her clothes shirt and turns into a white lady. Yeah. And then takes off her shirt and and the white lady takes off her shirt and turns into an ethnically ambiguous lady. So, when I first when I Google, because they took down the ad, um, you know, once once the backlash came. When I first Googled it, the only like I just saw a racist Dove commercial, and then I only saw the black chick going to the white chick, yeah, thing, and then and then later in the video, because there's like a a YouTube that's like a minute long about it, they did show the actual ad later, and there was no addressing about how the white lady then becomes ethnically ambiguous person, yeah, you know, which so they they missed the third lady, it when they showed. When they replayed the clips back to, you know, right. 
Well, isn't that people. what they do now with a lot of this? Like if they say, um, what's the word? Out of context a little Out bit? Out of context. Yeah. yeah. They remove the rest of the context yeah. and they show you something to prove their point. They show you the evidence that they want to show you so that their point is proven. Now, now that we have like the full video and we played it. Yeah. It's. It, it it's hard to have the same opinion and i yeah here's what i think can i can i go yeah, first in my opinion i'm just gonna go right into my opinion i think um i'm always a guy that likes to be positive before i get negative so i'm going to say it's like do i think the ad was a uh, racist intentionally no, because if you really look at it, black to white to something else, it's just clearly like, oh, look, like I don't know, even what, I don't know what com clothes coming off even means for a Dove commercial. I don't even know what that means. Like, you don't, yeah, put anything on. You don't put shampoo on clothes. Like, I don't, so yeah. I don't understand why I do that. But you know, it's like, I think they're just trying to show different examples of people. You know, yeah. like looking fresh, looking fresh. But I think it's one of those things that it's so, especially in the climate and the way people's minds work now, it's so obviously perceived it can be perceived Here's as my racist opinion. Okay, let me, let me finish. Yeah. so i'm saying it's like you, you someone that wrote that script and someone that read it should be like we can't do this like so whoever their pr or creative people are they should probably they were probably fired immediately to let that even go past to the point you know it's like it's like there are certain things that like even if your intention isn't there it looks so bad it's like there are times like i'll do a joke right in my act and like i'm like Oh, like what I meant to say was this for this punchline, and no one else sees that because what are, if I, you know, if I said the words wrong, if I didn't um, do enough premise before, if I didn't say enough of the, you know, the background information I needed, or if I delivered it a weird way, people would be like, oh, I thought you were talking about X, and it's like, no, my my punchline meant to be Y, but you know what I mean? It's like like it, yeah. it, it's clear that most people, I watched it too. I'm like, this is fucking terrible. Like, what the fuck is this? I and, think okay, my opinion is that do i think that they were intentionally trying to show that like what dove does is turn your black skin into somebody white i don't think that was their intention this is my opinion i don't know is that what but, they okay but they really should have been more fucking careful are we allowed to curse on this yeah they should have been more careful about I think they letting something out. Like I think that. they could have done that, but let's say if they reverse, like the white girl starts to the black girl to the ethnically ambiguous, then there wouldn't be a problem, right? But why do you like? It, that's why it's there wouldn't be a stupid. problem if they why started start, with the white girl. Why do you start with the 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 the, the um black person, then go to like it's like that, everything people you are going to perceive been it. So much more right, careful, right. yeah. That's and, and you could say all this like, oh, that wasn't our intention. That wasn't like, of course, but it's like. Just, 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 it's like almost like reading the room. It's like yeah, if, if, if a comic before me goes and does jokes about whatever COVID, you could tell the crowd hates, like, oh, fuck COVID. We don't believe, fuck you. I'm not going to go up there and do COVID jokes, you know? Yeah. It's like reading, like, that's just so, it's just. Like, have a really little dumb. bit of a better pulse yeah. on how that could have been received. It's amazing, too, because Dove is a huge company, multi million dollar industry. And it's like, you think they would hire, like, smarter people? Like, I think yeah. me and you could have wrote. Like seen that in the boardroom and be like, this is not, this is not. Yeah, a we good need to change the people. order of these girls. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But there is, a, it is also like, um, you know, it's really stupid. But then, like, I don't want to even say the taking out of context is a bad thing because they're they're focusing on what the problem is. There's yeah. no problem with the, you know, whatever going the lady going into the ethnically and that's no problem. So yeah, taking it out of context, you might watch the whole thing and be like, oh, like this is it, but it still is. Uh, racist and, 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 and inappropriate. So they're just yeah. focusing on that. So I don't think there are definitely instances where people take things out of context and it's clearly to like, um, yeah, like, and twist this is it. hard. But this stuff. is one of those, like, instances. this is hard stuff to talk about. Like, it's so hard to talk about, like, who's yeah. right. I'm, who's I'm wrong. hard talking about it. What's, <laughs> what's racist? What's not racist? Yeah. Like, it's hard to talk about all this stuff. We're going to try and we're going to fail. We're going to fail. We're going to no. try and we're going to fail. And we're going to look at things out of context and form opinions and then look at them back in context and change them. Like it's, it's hard. It's like the, this, the information is like getting thrown at you and, and like shot at you from different you, directions. You know what I think is kind of, I think what we should be thinking is something that gets thrown out a lot. You need to think this way, or this is the right way to think. And 
I think a lot of us, for the most part, agree with most of the things. But I think also we're all people with our own opinions. And yeah. but we're we're definitely in this society or be like, you got to think this way. This is the appropriate way. This is where you got to. And, you know, I think. Uh, well, I mean, let's be fucking real. It's like most of the stuff that's like it, it's all good, you know, like be accepting and be treat everyone equal of course you know yeah but ever like i said everyone has their own opinions so um anyways let's move on we just wanted to like like uh point those things out that we thought were very interesting from the the, the first couple episodes yeah and um, we're still gonna talk out of our ass yeah <laughs> we're still we gonna talk everything. out of our ass but we're also gonna like follow up with it you know like, i'm a comedian you're a scientist we like wanna... we we know we know she knows about neuroscience i know about comedy like we don't know um everything no. You know? Yeah. We're not political science majors. We're not. Yeah. I feel like we're like defending ourselves right now, even though there's nothing wrong. <laughs> we're, the, we're the one like we're bringing it up. Like, yeah, that's, that's the difference. Good. It's like you don't want you, you know what's you don't want to talk out of your ass and then figure out that right. you're wrong later and then have somebody else bring it up really like, quickly. Yeah. You brought up something the other day um, in, in bed or whatever. Like you were like, um, I mean, it sounds sexual. I mean, like yeah. we were laying in bed, like about to go to bed and you're like, you thought that Rogan came out. And like said like oh I said the 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 uh, the n word before it kind of got leaked out or yeah. like brought up you thought it would have been any different and I I don't think it would have been any different I think maybe people what do you mean by any different I like I, th- I, I still think he would have about- got I think I think I think it was still would have been received like like uh terribly i don't think anyone would be like oh he came out in front of it no problem like i i think it's, no i wasn't talking about how it would be received oh, okay. i was talking about if how he, he would came be out before it before somebody else had called him out about it if he had stepped forward and said hey i used this word wrong in a wh- for a while and i i'm sorry you thought it would have been better for me more respectful so it's not about like what the outcome would have been i don't know what the outcome would have been and obviously him and his pr team are doing whatever they can to to like control the outcome but like right for me as a personal listener as one listener i would have appreciated if he had come out about it a long time ago and just addressed it sure. and been like, okay, like I, think, I did something wrong for a while. I re- like the second he realized, Oh, it's wrong. I did this wrong thing. I realized it's wrong. Um, and then like maybe have a small discussion about it and move on. Yeah. That would have meant something to me. Whereas like when all of these things come out, it's like people just hide and be like, Oh, I did those things too. Like I did those things. But I like right. I, I'm just gonna like I, survive as long as I can until somebody figures it out. I think I think you're a reasonable person. Like like uh, yeah, if he did that, I'd be like, wow, that's I give him respect for that. It's yeah, still but terrible, he could. But if but he did that, he could have lost like millions of followers if he that, did. That's the thing. It's like I think a lot of these people that get canceled, they know they did some shit, you know. Yeah. And they're probably thinking about, oh, this is a resurface. And I I I gotta believe one or two of them out there um, have been like, maybe I should come out in front of it first. And then, you know, but these people are such they make so much money. They have companies invested in them. And it's like it, to, to, to sacrifice all that stuff. Um, they may think it's the right thing to do, but I'm sure they have uh, like business people, agents and like, yeah, they're going to let a lot of people down. Yeah. There's you know? a lot of things that we don't know. There's a lot that, of things that, that go are in into play. It. Yeah. It, it's not like, like as much as we want to be fairy tale, do the right thing. Moral, no, it, I'm not money, sitting it's money. Here. It's about money. I'm not and sitting shit. here yeah. on this microphone saying, Joe Rogan, you should have done it this way i'm sitting here on this microphone saying like as a user as like somebody who had watched a few i have not seen all of his episodes but as someone who's watched a few of his episodes that's and, gonna get us canceled her watching joe rogan <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the big thing. like some like it's always like when somebody who i'm a fan of goes on his podcast and i want to watch but um, yeah, that's 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 i think how that's I'm how not, I do it too, yeah right? but it's comedians like, i like go on as a watch. user as like a um as somebody watching, it would have been. It, this is how it would have been meaningful to me. Yeah. But I, I'm not sitting here telling someone what to do. I'm not sitting here being like, you should have done it this way. There's a lot of other factors here that I'm, I don't have to deal I with. I think, like I said, I think it's an admirable thing to do, but I, I don't think it's yeah. smart. It wouldn't have been way. smart. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. All right, guys. Well, we're let's just, get into what the podcast is actually about. Yeah, we're cleaning up our mess here. Hopefully, we don't in the no, future gonna, we don't not, make the mistakes. No, that, not know. hopefully. I hope that we make more mistakes. I hope. I, I don't even know if mistake is the right word, but I hope we yeah, keep sorry about that. bringing that you like stuff for, like from our heart. We're constantly checking ourselves. 
And I hope we constantly, like, we're going to make this about checking ourselves. Like, we're going to keep checking ourselves. And if somebody figures something out, we're going to address it. And, like, this is hard stuff to talk about. This is hard stuff to talk about. But we also don't want to be so careful that we yeah. don't say stuff that we feel, you know? Right. Like, so we're going to keep doing this. All right. We're let's keep do, let's do the safe thing and talk about ourselves. All right? All right. Let's <laughs> yeah. make fun of ourselves. Woo! So, as, the, as, this, uh, as, as you... Um, May or may not know, this is the Mixed Buzz podcast. We answer um, and ask intrusive questions about mixed race heritage and uh, ethnic backgrounds that are uh, mixed. And, you know, we have discussions about race all the time. Um, so some of the questions um, we're going to answer today. Right. Oh, yes, you have you have a sheet there that's more neat than mine. Mm. Um, so uh, we tease this on the second episode. Um, Shiv, you want to read the question that we're going to answer? Okay, the first question we're going to answer um, is one that we came up with a while ago. We teased it. Has either side, so has either um, ethnic side, yeah, um, imposed any culture-related things onto you, you know, in childhood and stuff? Like, oh, like, we want you to do this cultural-related thing consistently um, to get in touch with your culture. Sure. That's you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You go first. Okay. So uh, growing up, I, I, my mom was Chinese. My dad's Puerto Rican. One million percent, my mom wanted me to do all the Chinese things. Like she valued Chinese culture way more than Puerto Rican culture, than any other co white culture, anything. She sent me to Chinese school. She wanted me to play the violin, even though the violin is not necessarily a Chinese thing. The piano, too. I mean, you see, you go, a lot of kids, the, in the, in the wind instruments playing the violin or Asian um and the clarinet too Is um that true? I, I think so right isn't that kind of an Asian stereotype the violin <laughs> it is um so my mom wanted me to do all that stuff she wanted me to um Chinese school basically was just learning how to speak Chinese she wanted me to like hang out with only Chinese kids so she imposed a lot of that onto me and to be completely and fairly honest I hated it I didn't hate that I didn't hate, I don't hate Chinese culture. Yeah, you don't hate the culture. No. Chinese school was just fucking brutal, because <laughs> everyone in, uh, in the the school was a hundred percent Chinese. Um, they like their Chinese was like their first language, so one I just looked different from everyone, so that felt weird. And two, it's like English was my first language, so I'm like e I'm like an ESL level kid, and there's no ESL in. Because it's English second language. There's no CSL, Chinese second language, you know, in Chinese school. So I was just like the dumbest kid in the entire school. I felt awkward. Also, it's just like, I you know, I'm half and I, I'm a little taller than these kids. So I just felt like this, like the big Lenny the of big, Mice and Men guy. The big dummy. The big dum dum. Yeah. The big dum dum. And I was literally like placed like, like, I think I was like, if I was in the fifth grade, I might have been in like the first grade level class. So I was just like. You know, like remember an elf? <laughs> remember an elf where he's at that he's yeah. at the desk and he's like gigantic and all the little elves are like <laughs> he's like got his like heads like on the ceiling like that. So that's how I felt. I felt really dumb and like literally how elf felt. Like he felt out of place and things were weird. That's how I felt. And like the, here's the thing, it's like and I hope, you know, I wanna raise my kids this way. I want them to I wanna encourage thing I want them to be encouraged to do things they wanna do. It's like I never wanted to go. It was all forced upon me. The violin, the piano, the, you know, going to um, uh, tutoring stuff like Chinese school was all just forced upon me. Going to a Buddha temple every Sunday. Yeah. My mom would take me to temple and do all this like Buddhist Chinese shit, pray um, uh, every Sunday. And I didn't want to do any of it. It wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't anything. I had like any inspiration. You have a joke about that too. <laughs> mom, she's uh, she used to take me to temple too because she's a Buddhist. I had to go to temple and pray with monks. Yeah, anyone else? <laughs> no, it's weird, you know. And I never like going, so I'd always play Game Boy there and like hide from my mom. And then when one day my mom caught me, she's like, "James, you cannot bring your Game Boy to temple. You will make Buddha very mad." I was like, "Mom, Buddha's Asian. He loves Game." <laughs> right? You probably invented the thing, you know? You're praying with him. I'm playing with him. Get out of here, temple. Go, go, go. It was just like, it was tough. And like, I think a lot of my, 
weird moments in my life. Like every Sunday was brutal. It's yeah. just like sad. So it, I'm not it, looking to think... forward to any Sunday because Chinese school, a uh, uh, temple was before Chinese school. So my whole Sunday was just dedicated. I had fucking two days off from school. I have Friday and Saturday and then go back to no, 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 Saturday, Sunday, go back to school, but no Sunday. So I only had yeah. Saturday off. And then Saturday, my mom would send me to like a, like Kumon or something. So, so I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Kumon. Come on. So, <laughs> Come on. Come on so with the Kumon. Sounds, it sounds like a combination. The reasons why you didn't like it didn't really have to do with the Chinese culture. It, ha- it has more to do with like the fact that it was forced on you. Yeah. The fact that you stuck, you felt like you stuck out in a bad way yeah. when you went. And the fact that it ate up time. It like it ate up time that like you kind of needed to decompress. So I have something like that as well. Well, also, too, it's like I think if I went to these things and like people were like, welcome, like twist my nipples <laughs> and give me money and slap my ass. I would have loved it. But I go and everyone looks at me like, what the fuck? Is that guy? This, this guy's not Asian, you know. And then then you're like in class and kids are kids are assholes. You know, you're in class yeah. trying to read and you're getting zeros on test. You know, I have a joke about it in my act where it's like the teacher used to make the chalkboard of the grades. Like 90 to 100 percent, she would like write out how many students fell into that criteria. 80 to to uh, 90 percent, this many, stu- and then it was always like 50 percent one, and everyone just knew it was me. You know, yeah, it sucks. It was it was pretty <laughs> bad. It's an embar- It's just That's- not. It wasn't a pleasant thing to do. That's why I hated it. Like if it was great and fun, I'm sure I would have liked it. It just wasn't fun. It was forced upon me. You know. Yeah, I hear you. I have something like that. Yeah, let's hear your. I have, your I have shit, something dude. like that where it's like it's not that I. Oh, hate- oh, real quick. I'm sorry. Puerto Rican. Nothing. Nothing yeah. imposed on me. Nothing. So nothing. it's just right. your Asian side. Just Asian mom. Yeah, my dad. That's the same thing with me. Is it really? Yeah. So, okay, it's, it's similar. It's your dad's white. Things. What could he impose on you? It, Chop some wood? Be Mormon? Like, what What could he have imposed on you? And like, he, he made me, like, paint a fence and build a deck. Own a company? All right. But that, that's like build a he, deck. He, he was, like, very much into chores. But I don't think that's, like, a white thing. I think that's just a no, normal. No, no, that's normal. He was very much like, like, build this deck. Paint these fences. I guess a white clean thing the kitty would be litter. like play some hockey, right? Maybe. No, yeah, but nothing like that where it was like an a- activity outside of the house. Um, mm, yeah. It was never forced on me. Um, but like I had something similar on my Asian side where it's like those three things where it's like, um, like it's not that you hated the culture, but it, but it was, uh, it was forced upon you. You fell out of place. And it took up time that you needed to kind of like the time, the kind of time you needed to decompress from well, school. Well, it's also time so, you want to yeah. do, you so know, me, I wanted to play video explain. games and, and yeah. hang out with okay. friends. Yeah, okay. Sorry. I don't, Sorry, I don't care about your video games. I now care. Listen. <laughs> Super Mario, bro. But, um, Let's hear it. so mine is, uh, I had to do Kathak dance class. <laughs> <Hey>. James! I can't, <laughs> I can't help it. What the fuck? <laughs> Leave it alone. I wasn't even doing, I wasn't even trying to make fun of it. I just had a, <coughs> uh, a little cough. <coughs> when my sister and I were little, we had to do this um, Indian dance ca- class called Kathak dance class. And it's like, uh, it's kind of like a very, it's like a very spinny slash stompy style. We'll show dance a video. Class. We'll show a video. Yeah, yeah, show oh. a video. <laughs> Yeah, so we like it was every Saturday morning. So it's like every day of the week you wake up and you go to school and you have to wake up early and all you want to do is sleep in. And then on Saturday morning, which is supposed to be your day that you sleep in, you wake up at like 7 a.m. and drive an hour to Indian dance class, Indian Kathak dance class. Why couldn't it be Friday and miss a day of school? Why has it got to be Saturday? Yeah. Or Sunday? Yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit. All right, keep going. And so, but then I go, and it's like, it's not, it's like what you said. It's not like, welcome. We love you, Shivani. Like, oh, you come here. are fantastic. We, every, every level is, every level is welcome. Every ethnicity is welcome. It's not like that. It was all Indian girls and me, and I stuck out. And I just also wasn't as gifted as these girls. <laughs> like, Can I ask you this, though? So you were like, Oh, I don't. I didn't feel like I was gifted. I feel like the same way too. It's like, oh, I'm not as gifted. Is that maybe just us, com- like, kind of like complaining that maybe we were using our halfness to be like, oh, we're not as gifted? Yeah, we're not like, 100%. Are, are we using like an excuse? It's like, oh, if I was full Indian, I'd be good. To, uh, but here's the talk. thing: is like, I was treated differently a little bit. I was treated differently. Yeah, I didn't yeah. feel included. I didn't. I like 
But the the instructor wasn't really nice to anybody, though. So, like, that being said, like, when I say I don't feel included, it was, like, the instructor wasn't, like, necessarily nice to people. The instructor was always kind of, like, tough and, like, like you know, like, do this right, and if you're not doing it right, then you don't care enough, and, and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. It wasn't – it wasn't – how much of, like, my halfness am I using as an excuse um, for, like, how I was treated when, when the instructor really was hard on everybody? Yeah. I, 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 I – maybe it's in our own head. Like, it you could know, be. Yeah, yeah, we could just be – oh, I'm only half, and, like, I'm only half as good. Maybe it's just, like, a mental blockage, you know? Yeah. It could have, yeah, it could have been like you look different and so you feel different and so you perform different. But there's so got, there is a little bit of, they do treat people different. Like, I, I feel like if you're half, they may take you less serious. I really feel that way. There's got to be a little bit. But here's you know? the thing. My sister did better than me. Like, she she mm. eventually got placed into like a, a, a like a higher, a higher camp of, of Indian students. Wow. Yeah, students. Yeah. So, like, she got, like, placed at a little bit of a higher level. She also looks more Indian than me. Yeah. So, I don't know. I have no look. idea. But, like, it's, like, how much is it an excuse if, like, my sister ended up, like, doing a higher level? But, yeah, it was that thing where yeah. it's, like, you wake up on a Saturday morning to do it. It's forced on you. Like, I had to do it. I didn't have a choice. Like, my mom's, like, you're going to Indian Kathak dance class. It's not a choice. You go. And you experience. And you mess up. And then you come home. And feel a little bit worse about yourself. Why? Why did she force it upon you? Because she wanted you to be Indian. Did it's she some, only Indian my Asian culture? side did that to me. Yeah. yeah. yeah Same yeah. thing Chinese side. It's like I I want you to be as Chinese as possible. And then we talked about this a couple episodes ago. But it's like you know the mom the moms are feel like I feel like they 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 want to shape their kid the way they they think. Is, is it best. a mom thing or is it an Asian thing? <sighs> or is it both? Or is it none? I would really like to hear if you're like a. If you were mixed and you had like an Asian dad, right? Let us know if they impose stuff on you. Yeah. Because maybe there is an yeah, Asian dad please, out there. It's if like you, do you have go to Chinese school or, or an Indian dad. You do Katak dance, you know, and then like the mom's white or the mom's Puerto Rican. And they're just sitting back, like yeah, you know. Just yeah, that's a good do. idea. If you have, if you're half Asian and your Asian side is your dad's side, please can you write speak us in up mixmutspodcast at gmail dot com or mixmuts podcast at instagram dm us your um store if you either have a, like, like a situation like that where your dad was the cultural or yeah cultural uh impo we'll imposer. retweet you on the i mean that's not copyright. No, let's bring it up in the next we'll tell you yeah we'll, we'll, talk, about we'll, we'll talk about your experience either anonymously or with your name whatever you feel right um but this is like yeah it's a, it's like an experiment we just we need more samples to be able to figure out like is this a mom thing is this an asian thing is this like yeah a Chinese thing, an Indian thing, like what is this? What would you put your money on right now? What if, was it a mom thing or an Asian thing? Asian what would you thing. Put, yeah, me too. I would put yeah. money on Asian. I would put money on the Asian. <laughs> like Yeah. But then I kind of formed because of because it was forced it was so obvious that I wanted to play sports when I was a kid that I didn't want to do dance class. I right. didn't want to do like these cultural things. And, and Temple too was Shivani, so boring. Shivani's very athletic. I, no, but yeah. I was just like I just I was I, I was fidgety. I just couldn't sit still. I couldn't pay attention, and all I wanted to do was play sports. And when you make someone go to temple, and they're speaking, like, a different language the whole time, and you have to sit still for hours, like, and you have to go to, like, dance class, like, Saturday mornings, like, on the time where you're supposed to, like, sleep in and catch up on sleep and, and have fun and go outside and play with worms. Like, worms. That's when I started to form, like, this sort of – negative association what the fuck happened i don't know i think I'm no way. all right um yeah i don't know i think um but i formed a negative association between like indian culture yeah and true, myself yeah. i just yeah i formed this negative a, a view on indian culture when i was a, when i was a young kid because it felt like a lot of things were forced and it felt like it wasn't me and well, you it associated like with place. you you associate with pain yeah, you know, I associate feelings. it with yeah, yeah, with feeling out of place. Um, whereas, like, you could tell that all I wanted to do was kick a soccer ball or shoot a basketball. And that's the thing is, like, you were you're very athletic. Like, um, when you were varsity um, and all, you know, a lot of sports. So you were very gifted. And it's weird that like even your your parents or your mom was not your Asian mom was like doesn't like oh she's good at this let's just keep going to that. It's like she's good at this fucking don't give a shit. Cut tuck. 
It, well, and you have to be athletic to do Cuthuck well. You have to be athletic. Oh, but, so I think it's like something that like if I signed up for Cuthuck dances now, which yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to do very much. Right. But like if I signed up for it on my own now, it could be fun for me. It's athletic. It's a workout it, like Bhangra too. Like it, it would be fun if I wanted to do it. But if it, if I had to wake up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday to do it mm. and I felt out of place when I got there and I didn't feel very good about myself when I was doing it, you, wouldn't like, go. you don't you don't want to do it. Yeah. It's not fun. It's weird that we both grow up with parents that impose shit on us against our will. It's a weird thing to do. It's like. I guess that's just, you know, Asian culture. But here's the like, thing. Like, looking back, though, I would I, – I genuinely feel like I wish I stuck with it. I wish I got good at it. I wish that I had that as a part of my culture now that I'm a grown-up and now that I'm, yeah. like, trying to figure myself out in the world. Like, I wish that I did enjoy it as a kid, and I wish I did <sighs> move up in the ranks. I, I think you just wish you had it now. Do you but wish... But you didn't want to go through the work. No, do you I, wish you knew Mandarin better? I do, but I also, like, don't want to put in the work. I think... <laughs> I wish I just knew it. I didn't... W I don't wish I went every day still, you know? Yeah, the experience of, of learning was hard. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that was very, very forward. Yeah. Um, so... Should we go into the next one? Yeah, let's go into the next questions. Um, so, guys, like, uh, we want to hear from you. We want to hear the questions you have for us. If you're mixed race or if you're just a person that's a fan of the podcast, um, please send us some questions um, that you want to ask us about our mis ra mixed race, intrusive questions intrusive. about our ethnic backgrounds. Um, we have a couple fan questions that we'd like to answer. Um and uh, Shivani will start us off with. No, actually, we need that piece of paper. Let's. So, a you want this one? A fan asked us anonymously a question. Okay. Anonymously, An yes. Anonymous fan. Anonymous fan. An anonymous fan. Watch out! Whoa, whoa, whoa the name, Shiv. I, no. I folded it. Well, that's not the that's not the person who asked. Um, okay, the anonymous person asked. Why do you think Indian or Asian Canadians slash Americans hate themselves so much? I come around so many Indians and Asians looking down upon their own culture, and also there's a deep-rooted desire for them to be accept accepted by the white society, but at the same time, they hate everything radical about the whites, but also want to be accepted by them. Jesus. And then they one more thing they said is, they'd go as far... Um, as to convert to their religious beliefs, and they may also desire a white partner secretly while hating on their own inner self. <laughs> Why do Asians, Indians, a Asian hate themselves? Um, I do, I think I do come across that a bit where not just me and you, because I think we share that. We do, like, we always, we, we're, we're constantly joking about how much we hate ourselves. We just throw that around. That word, oh, I hate myself. Like, we throw that term around maybe 786 times a day, you know? Yeah. And uh, we have, you know, we have low self-esteem, low self-worth. And I do think I've, I, 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 I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think there is a lot of that in the Asian culture. And I think it has to do with the way we're raised. Cause you know, especially like, um, native, not a native American, but like, um, first generation Asians, the way they raise their kids is like work hard, study, um, very, very, very short on the compliments, mostly just criticism. And when you grow up like that, um, without really like like compliments and stuff, you you start to hate yourself. Like you just think you're not good enough ever, and you have to constantly be hustling and constantly prove yourself. So I think that kind of childhood and that kind of upbringing from your parents can, when you become an adult, you know. I have a different yeah. opinion. Okay. Well, I just, I think yeah. that like, if you're, if like, if I grew up with a mom, my mom was always like study hard, get good grades. And when I got a good grade, she'd be like, good, do same next time. So it's like, it was very brutal, you know, never good enough. Ne never did anything good enough. I, so right now in my life, I hate myself. But if, if, if like my mom were to be like growing up, like, oh, you did a great job. I'm so proud of you. I love you. I think now I would have more self-worth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's you. a thing with Asian culture. Yeah. Uh, and like, think? it's not, it, I think I have a different opinion. First of all, I didn't grow up with my parents ever commenting on my grades. 
They never commented on my grades. Even your Indian mom? She never oh. talked about my... She talked about my sister's grades, though. That's so weird. My mom literally would ask me every day if my report card came. No, yeah. Even when it came already the day before, I'm like, it just came. It's not coming. It's, it's not going to come for a couple months. No, yeah. My my mom, my Indian mother never cared about my grades. Like, it, like in a good way. I mean, like, if yeah. I got a bad grade, I would feel bad. But I never had to come home and feel double bad, you know? <sighs> my mom would beat my fucking ass. Because I, I know a, a lot of kids, a lot of my so friends. So terrified. A lot of my Asian friends would like get a bad grade and they'd feel the shame and then they and then like I had to imagine like what they had to go through when they go home and feel like double shame from their parents. Like Yeah, it sucks. My my parents never shamed me for getting a bad grade. And in fact, I was a terrible student when I was in elementary school. <laughs> I was awful. I couldn't pay right. attention. I wasn't like rambunctious. I wasn't like crazy. I just couldn't pay attention for the life of me. I just could not sit still and pay attention. And so I didn't do very well. And I bring home these like awful grades and I don't like my parents just either never saw them or never really cared. Dude, that that makes me so envious of you. I, I, yeah. I was so terrified to get bad grades. And like even if I got like if I got an A, I'd be like, I'm safe. Even if I got like a B plus, it wasn't exactly like. Woo, I'm good. Like, I'm still, like, thinking of, like, oh, my mom's going to think, why didn't you get an A? What the fuck did you, like, you know? Yeah. I was so scared, dude. So my opinion why Asians might hate themselves, I think has some part, some percentage to do with, like, especially when we were younger, first of all, the things being forced on us. Um, You'll go to Chinese school. But it's also, like, <laughs> when you looked, when you watched TV as a kid or when you, like, when we were kids, like, yeah. When we looked at media and when we looked at people who were successful, it was always like white people. Right. So that goes that goes to our anonymous person who hates themselves. <laughs> and then we look at our, like you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, there's a deep well, I'm not like that. There's a deep rooted desire to be accepted by white society. They hate everything radical about the whites, but also want to be accepted by them. Yeah, I think it's because because we want to be up at, like we want to be on TV, too. We want to be on. Yeah. The people you see, most of 90 percent of the people that are the, the image of success and happiness and glamour in this country is uh, is white people like the people who run the country. White. It used to be. Yeah. I mean, what are you talking then, about? The president's white. Like like anytime and then Beyonce it, came through and changed well, the game. Right. In the arts. <laughs> it's that. But like 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 the president's white. Anytime you see like some government thing. Oh, Barack everyone, Obama it, was black. Right. Right. One out of forty-seven, dude. <laughs> okay, yeah. But I'm One saying out of 47. it's like, like, yeah. No, but like we see these. Um, when we were younger, we didn't have a black. Well, when they when they show like all these elected officials in a yeah. room together, they're all white people, dude. Yeah, they're all like sleeping. The, uh, the, the owners of of of, of uh, pro sports teams, yeah. all white people. Yeah. Billionaires, all white. Um, actors for the longest time, Brad Pitt, Successful Ben Affleck, tech you know. dudes, right? Bill it's Gates. Like anytime there's a Steve minority Jobs. that gets a a, a leading role. The fucking thing on Twitter is this is this is going to be a change for the cult. It's like, but you know what I mean? Like it's it's brand new. like it's still the leading man or woman is always like white. And then in 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 like uh, for women, I feel like it too. It's like I guess like growing up, especially it's like body positivity. You see all the the the, the cover is all hot, you know, beautiful white people. Yeah, white beautiful woman, white women you know? with boobs and boobs. Yeah, like if you go to other countries too, like when they like kind of like. What oh yeah, when they American like culture is portray yeah. American cultures in other countries. You got to see it for yourself. But like, yeah. when they have like billboards of American things, it's always like some like beautiful blonde woman with boobs. It's almost like a six. You're successful if you're dating a white person or if you're in white culture. It's like you've you've gotten at you've gone to this the the billionaire boys club in a way. Yeah, you know, or, or girls club. Um, yeah. So it is kind of a that yeah it's like you're yeah. part of a group. So I think if you that's take, why right. it's just like because of all of that and because of like you know there's systemic inequities. Yeah. Um. Then you know if you if you're not white and also if your parents are telling you every day get straight A's you know right. you're not good enough. This is a reflection of who you are. Like this isn't good. Then then you're gonna like not really like yourself. But I think a lot of that is changing. I think a lot of Asian people put it into comedy now, like, you know, how... Well, like, I, I do want to say this. It's like, you do hear a lot of people like, oh, that person's trying to be white, or, you know, that person's trying to be black. But you don't hear a lot of that person's trying to be Asian, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Because white, you know, you got 
the businesses. That's you got true. The, That's you a got good the, point. Run the run the country and the black people have like in the arts, like like music and and sports, like they run the world. It's like yeah, Asians don't have like, that thing where it's like what do like what like what 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 Chinese person is running like so, is like the best at like what. what? Hacking, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Even even coders. We watched some coding movie the other day. It's fucking Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Thor is hacking. It's like, why is Thor the whitest, most jacked person? What what <laughs> hacker is jacked like that, dude? Of typing? His yeah. biceps are huge. Then he yeah. bangs the Chinese chick. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's... It's true. It's like you see people um, kind of like change the way that they speak to sound more black, to sound cool or to sound more white, to, to like get more jobs. And like but you never see someone imitating an Asian person or like right. make it, changing their voice to sound more Asian unless they are making fun of Asian. people. Right. And there's little and, there's been little success. I think when um, when Jackie Chan and Jet Li, those martial art guys were like yeah. really big, I think. I think that was there was a moment where like this is a leading man and you want to kick ass and take martial art classes. But yeah, that kinda, that's gone. Where, 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 what's the last? That was a fad. Yeah, where's the where's <laughs> the where's the last? There hasn't been one of those movies in a while. Those used to be my favorite movies because yeah. I used to look. Oh, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, they're kicking ass. They're main characters. Yeah, I don't know why that died. Those were fun movies. I kicked. They the, were the shit out of people. Yeah, flying in the air, doing their own stunts. That was fun. That was fun. All right. Um, there's still there's still like stuff going like yeah. Cobra Kai. What is that? But that's like a, isn't that a white guy is the main character in that one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I I haven't watch watched it. it. Yeah. Um, See, let's not talk out of our asses. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we, we kind of have to wrap up. But um, real quickly, we're going to answer um, a couple more fan questions. Um, so this person who wants to be credited on the podcast. Remember, you have a, if you want to send questions, you have a choice to be anonymous or not. So don't feel like we're going to out you. But uh, am I saying this right? It's an Indian name, so you want to say it, Shiv? So I don't, yeah, Vandita. Vandita, okay. I didn't want to fuck it up. It's okay. Um, Vandita asked us a bunch of questions, and two of us that really stuck out to us were... I think this one's quick. Are, um, are you going to go back to your home country? I guess that what she means by that is are we going to go back to our motherlands? Now... Mine would be China, 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 Taiwan. No, yours would be the United States. That's our motherlands. We were born here. No, I mean, I think what she, I think what but she's asking. But what she's is, asking, yeah. I think, is, are you gonna visit your home, like not your parents' home? We're gonna be going back. Countries. Yeah, our parents' home countries. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of, uh, my mom is from Taiwan. I used to go every year when I was a kid. I haven't gone in a long time, and sadly, it's like. I, I guess I, you know, this isn't the excuse, but I'm so busy with comedy and stuff. Yeah. I don't even want. I hate you know. I if I take two days off from comedy or a day off from comedy, I, I'm 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 a wreck. Um, I want to go. I think like the only I can see myself going to visit my grandma. Maybe if I can like convince myself to take a vacation, I guess, or book some shows out there. Yeah. Um, for Puerto Rico, same thing. I went to Puerto Rico once when I was like a baby. I don't remember any of it. Um, but my dad, you know, I don't have any family there, so I don't, you know, I guess vacation will be the next time I go back there. Yeah. Um, sadly, I feel like I should be going more cause I gotta, you know, live up to my culture, but I just live up to your culture. <laughs> I have to live up to my culture. A little bit, a little bit irresponsible. What about you? Are you going back to India or, or Germany? I have visited India like several, many times actually. Uh, my grandmother, my grandparents have a house in Baroda. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I used to visit as a, when I, when we'd visit, we'd visit for like weeks to months at a time. Yeah. So like when we go, we're there at least two weeks. Like you don't go for a week. So you're going back soon? Because it's hard to get there anyways. And um, no, I'm not going back soon, I don't think. Um, Do you think you will go back soon? I hope I I don't know, but like when I do go, it's it's <sighs> so it gets so sad. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, it's my favorite place in the world. Is that right? My grandparents' house in India in Baroda. It's my favorite place in the world. You wear the same shit every day. <laughs> you wear the same shit. You don't have to pick out your outfit. Mm. You don't have all the buzz of like sh like stuff constantly grabbing your attention. Everybody's like on a mission there, like. It's kind of it, it, in a weird way. It's like kind of like New York, is where it? they are. Um, it's not a it's not a touristy city. Baroda, India, is not a touristy city, but it's a big city. Um, and 
and people there are just hustling all the time. They're always like biking, selling their products, right? Um, trying to make, trying to, trying to make their it. Family, yeah, yeah, feed their family, make it, and they're also like hospitable and nice, and everyone's so nice to each other because they want you to buy their product, and yeah. like everyone's working so hard. The, the roads are always like there's tons of traffic. Um, it's like lively, but it's not. It, it, but it's lively, but it's also just like we're all here for the same reason. We're all trying to, and you just like wear the same stuff every day, and there's no yeah. like extra distraction. That is a big thing in this country. You get to United like clear States. your mind, yet yeah. yet work at the same time. Yeah, those people. Yeah, they wear the same thing every day. Like here, it's like if you wear the same thing twice, people would just. They're just so kick focused over there yeah. because there's, like I said, no distractions. There's n like. There's not a lot of alcohol. I don't. I didn't see any alcohol every time I go. There's like no way to buy alcohol. Oh, that sucks. There's no. There's not <laughs> a lot of drugs. No, I don't. There's you you unsold me on the. In place. this city, in this city, I don't know about other oh, cities, okay, okay. but in Baroda, India, there's like I. I don't even know if you can get alcohol, and so everyone's just focused. There's no like, sh flashing lights. There's no like billboards with like random like american girls with boobs on i don't it's know it's not commercialized it's just not commercialized yeah, everyone's see, out everywhere for their we own go shit. add here add there there's add no ads here, add yeah there. it's just yeah. it's so simple it's simple living you get up you work you smile you Blue happy collar. with each other you look or indian collar yeah you're you're Brown very collar. good friends with your neighbors like there's a there's communities you stop by all your yeah. relatives places and there's no distractions so you're so focused I love it there. I love it there. One thing I liked about we have to move on, but one thing I liked about going to China. Oh, yeah, we gotta go. Yeah, is that uh, um, so my my grandma grew up on a farm, mm -hmm. and there's no internet really, and there is. You have to be in the house. It's like all like on cables and shit. So, yeah. you know, the first couple of days you get a little <laughs> check my Facebook, but then after a couple of days, once you get used to it, it's 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 great. Yeah, and you like it. And then when you go back home and you start checking things. It's great too because you immediately get re addicted. But yeah. it's good. You get weaned <laughs> off and you feel like it's good. You know, like walking the dog feels way better. Yeah. You know, there's, there's just breathing in air and looking at shit. And there's something about it that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. I think we're out of time. We're out of time. Do you want to answer? Thank you, Vandita, for your question. Vandita asked also what our kids, she thinks our kids will look like. Maybe we talk about that in the next one. Do you have a, didn't you have like a picture that you found online about mixed, because, because everyone's fucking each other in her interracial screwing so yeah i've like Chinese found some article online about like what the what a mixed person would look like in 2000 something and like it showed some like really beautiful woman and send i'm it, like that's <laughs> that's a little optimistic right <laughs> it was she's so beautiful that it's like okay that's a little too optimistic well mixed race but, people are are good looking for the most part mm, yeah chinese puerto rican indian white what do you think that'll look like it's hard to explain, but you think it'll be good looking or you think it might be too much where it's a mess? Could be. We, we could have like one really good looking kid and the next kid look like like <laughs> a bag of dicks or something. A like bag that. of dicks. Yeah. Are going to look like a bag of dicks. Have like one big eye and one small. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I think someone wants to drink during pregnancy. All right. Hey. <laughs> it's a bag of dicks. Just look like a bag. Of, I don't, even know, I don't know. I like. thought the article was a little too optimistic, but it's nice though. It's nice for an article to be like, "What okay. will we look like if we all just fucking mix together? What if we all just..." All right, that's a good tease. We have no idea what our kids are gonna look yeah. like. Come on, you know. We don't. Know. Uh, but um, thank you, Vandita, for the questions. That's a good uh, teaser. Next next episode, we'll um, uh, we'll talk about. Maybe how we're going to raise our kids. Yeah. What how race? Would we raise them? Chinese, Puerto Rican, Indian, white. What, what cultures? Are we going to be like our moms and impose, impose things on them? Or are we going to be more okay. chill? We'll leave it know? to them. We'll leave it to them. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the third episode of the Mixed Mutts podcast. If you have any questions or if you want to share your stories with us, Mixed Mutts podcast at, at, uh, at gmail.com or DM us Mixed Mutts podcast on Instagram. Go follow the page. Go subscribe to the YouTube um, it's youtube.com slash James Camacho. And um, yeah, we look forward to um, answering your questions and uh, we'll have some topics prepared for, for next week. That'll be fun. Um, follow me at Camacho Bro on Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok. And follow the podcast. Yeah. Mixed Mutts <laughs> Podcast. Every Stop time I plug myself. I, 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 it's, not, like the, it's, it's the podcast. I know. 
It's not you. We're not talking about you. We're you know, talking about us. This is every episode where I plug myself. I get yelled at and I go, you have anything to plug? No. no. The podcast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any, any, any last words? Um, mixed at Mixed Mutts Podcast. Mixed at Mutts. Mixed Mutts Podcast. 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 And I promise you, if we said anything that might have seemed dumb, we will acknowledge it. We yeah, promise, we talk right? out We're, our asses here on the podcast, right. and we will continue to do so. Right. And we will apologize when we need to apologize. All right, let's go finish that fucking hacker movie with fucking Thor. No, no, we're not finishing that movie. She bangs. She's, that movie's just him out banging Asian <laughs> girls. That's all it is. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. Tune in next week. Bye. Dajan, adios. I don't have time to cook anymore. There's no time!